Graduates, esteemed guests, family, friends, faculty members and staff, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 conferral ceremony of the South African College of Applied Psychology. Despite the many restrictions brought about by the global coronavirus pandemic and our inability to gather in physical safety as a college community to hold a graduation ceremony this year, we still want to celebrate your achievement. And so I declare this conferral ceremony of the South African College of Applied Psychology to be duly constituted. Dear SACAP graduates, graduation is a significant milestone which marks one of the most memorable experiences in the life of any student. Your graduation represents an end to one journey and the beginning of another. Although we cannot hold our graduation celebration as we had originally planned it, this conferral ceremony today will mean that you are legally admitted into your qualification. Today is therefore truly one of the highlights of the academic calendar, an occasion filled with joyous celebration as we the SACAP community recognize and honor our new graduates and celebrate your academic success and achievements. Graduation marks an opportunity for you and your loved ones to stop and reflect on the tremendous individual sacrifices which have been made, the obstacles which each of you have had to overcome along the way, as well as the hard work and determination which has brought you to this point in your academic journey. On behalf of the entire SACAP community, it gives me immense pleasure to offer our warmest and proud congratulations to each one of you on your wonderful achievements. During your time as a SACAP student, you have been supported by the love and sacrifice of your parents, guardians, friends and partners. It is important to acknowledge and thank them for the role which they have played in supporting your individual dreams and goals in order that today may become a reality. This year, SACAP celebrates 22 years of growth and innovation while pioneering and leading the charge in the field of applied psychology, counseling and coaching education. With rapid changes occurring in our lives and society more broadly, we are more committed than ever to provide education in the areas where our country's need is the greatest. Currently, SACAP boasts four physical campuses in Cape Town, Johannesburg, Pretoria and Durban, as well as a thriving online campus. 2020 marks an especially significant year for SACAP, as we exceeded the total student number of more than 2,000 students in Term 1, a significant milestone in our history. Over the course of this week, we will be honouring 555 graduates across four conferral ceremonies, the largest cohort of graduates in the history of SACAP. SACAP graduates of 2020, each one of you has the opportunity to go out and make a difference in the world around you, armed with new knowledge, insights and skills to contribute towards bettering the lives of others in a multitude of ways in your communities and beyond. Your education has been purposefully person-centered and praxis orientated with a key focus on empowering you to activate resources and effect positive social change. Transformation and making a positive and sustainable social impact in our communities is at the heart of why we do what we do. As a graduate of SACAP, you join a special community of our alumni, exceptional individuals who are making great contributions in many and diverse fields. 
we expect that you too will take up the challenge to contribute positively to society. We welcome you to this special and ever-growing community. Although the global COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to reconsider the manner in which today's celebration takes place, I personally look forward to a time in the future when all of us will be able to come together to celebrate your achievements at a physical graduation ceremony. In closing, dear graduates, our heartfelt congratulations to you, the class of 2020. Whatever the future holds for you, be sure to always ground yourself in the values of honesty, empathy, respect, integrity, compassion, and social justice. We wish you every success in the years ahead, and we will be watching in anticipation to see the role that each one of you will play in making this world a better place for all. It is with great pleasure that I now introduce Itumuleng Seku as our keynote speaker. When she was only 11 months old, Itumuleng was badly burnt in a house fire, and despite what would later be over 100 reconstructive surgeries, continued to feel like an outcast. It was not until she received a message from a matric student who had been inspired by her story that she began visiting schools, encouraging young people to achieve their full potential. In spite of her challenges, Itumaleng is a mother of twin boys, a Dove ambassador, motivational speaker, director of an NGO, and authoress of her new book, What Do You See? Itumaleng, you are most welcome. Hi there, it's ACAP and your beautiful graduates. Graduates, I'd just like to congratulate you. You have done so well for yourself. First of all, give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> well done. Um, over here, you are speaking to Tmeling Sikri and I'm here to tell you guys about my story. Um, and hopefully my story will then um, propel you to have a brighter and a more beautiful life with a great mindset, right? Um, so I got burned from a, a candle when I was only 11 months old. I was sleeping um, and my mom and her brothers were in the very next room and then they started smelling the smoke. Um, by the time my mother found me burning, it was a 70 degree Celsius fire. When she lifted me up from the bed, my right hand literally stayed behind. My bone skulls were showing. The right hand side of my body was completely burned. Um, and they had a white glove on my left hand. And literally every single day, one finger would drop within this glove. Until I was... In, I was left with one thumb, one hand, right? Um, and I was then in a coma for three months. I was then in hospital for another three years. Um, so hospital literally became my first home. Um, and then from there, I was then taken to school at the age of five. Um, but life really for me started when I was around 15 years old. And a fellow learner of mine said to me, you're so burnt, you look like a KFC meat. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? Right? Um, and that started trending, you know, um, to a point where I was mocked, you know, I was teased a lot. Um, and then I tried to, um, to commit suicide, um, three suicide attempts to be exact. Um, and my last suicide attempt, I was in grade 11 and I wrote a note to my mom and I said, hi mom, thank you for your love. Thank you for your sacrifices, but I just don't want to be here. And I took 300 pills, drank them, uh-huh, and then slept, right? Tried to, to die such a peaceful um, death. Um, and... A couple of hours later, I woke up, yeah, I know, um, with no pain, no foam, nothing. I was so mad. I was like, why? You know, um, and then in matric, in 
2007, um, I then met a very handsome gentleman, um, very tall, you know, dark, handsome, with a husky voice, you know, qualifications upon qualifications. And this guy said to me, you are so beautiful. I was like, what? You know, um, and then he then said, but not just that only, I love you. And I was like, nah, don't believe you. Um, and this guy just knocked and knocked and knocked, you know. Then I said yes, um, and we finally got married that very same year. Um, and my husband said to me that you have a purpose, and your purpose is to bring hope and healing to my people, right? Um, and that's when I went to the university of, the, excuse me, um, and that's when I went to the University of Johannesburg and I studied media. And on that note, my husband's name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, and then my husband and I started walking this spiritual path, you know, of healing. But more than that, that's when I then found out that actually through my story, I can heal so many people. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, when I graduated from UJ, I started working in the media industry. And my very first job was on a channel called 1G um, on channel 331. Then I worked for shows on the SABC channel, shows like Friends Like These, you know, Yo! TV, 3Talk, um, and so forth. I then worked on radio on a radio station called Metro FM with a gentleman called Sibusi Soliope. Um, I think some of you guys know him as DJ Sibu. Um, then I then produced for a lady called Tami Gudeni on Sundays. Um, and then from there, I was now surrounded by so many celebrities, right? Um, and because celebrities just live on free stuff, <laughs> most of them, um, it's like, no man, I need myself some free soap, right? Then I then wrote an email to Dove Unilever and I said, hi Dove, I am badly burned and I'd like to be a brand ambassador because unfortunately Dove is the only soap that I can use. And guess what Dove said? They said, yeah, you know, um, I then became the brand ambassador for two years and we started traveling across schools, um, motivating young girls, beautiful girls, just like yourselves, beautiful people, you know, and what I learned within that project was that they had scars within them. And that's when my purpose then started making sense that my scars they are more external, right? But every single person has got a scar within. Why? Because we all have a story to tell. Yes, exactly. But now many people's scars, they don't heal. And how we know that? Um, it's because so many people don't reach their full potential their full life, um, who they are meant to be. And I'm going to give you an example, right? For an example, I've got one hand and I've got one finger. <laughs> Miguel can type 35 words per minute. Yeah, <laughs> right? So now statistics say, because you have got 10 fingers and both hands, some of y'all's fingers they are manicured, you know, and etc. Very nice looking, red, you know, with some glitter. Mm -hmm. I see you. You are then supposed to be able to type 70 words per minute. So now the question is, are you reaching your full potential? <laughs> right? Another thing, out of 57 million people, only 12 million people 
have got traffic department licenses. And guess what? With only one hand and with only one finger, Miguel can drive herself. Oh yeah. <laughs> right? But now 12 million is only a fraction of the people that reside here. Which means that a whole lot of people are not reaching their full potential. They're not living the full life that they are meant to live. Is that you? Are you looking within yourself right now and you are saying, damn it, if she's got one hand and one finger and she has done so much and she is still doing so much and you have got 10 fingers, two hands, are you reaching your full potential? Where do you see yourself in the next future? The near future, rather. Are you living the purpose that you're meant to live right now? You are graduating, right? Well done. However, are you exactly where you are meant to be? Are you reaching your full potential? So now, I'm happy because you guys are graduating with psychology, right? Psychology has taught me that what you look at when you look at the next person is how you look at yourself. For an example, some of you guys were very uncomfortable by what you saw when you saw me for the first time, right? Psychology has taught me that that is because when you look at yourself in the mirror, you are uncomfortable by what you look at. Please note that I'm saying look because what you see, it's actually different to what you look at. In 2014, um, I started writing my book and it's titled, What Do You See? And that is because what you see in me right now is actually within you. And that's when I realized that whatever you look at, right, that's when you start seeing what you're meant to see. In 2014, I started seeing my beauty because guess what? My beauty actually lies within me. However, I'd also like to then say to you right now, what is it that you see when you see me right now? Because what you see within me, no, what you see <laughs> is actually within you. I'm going to tell you what I see when I see me. I see a very powerful woman. I see a woman of strength. I see a woman who has said, you know what? No matter what comes my way, I'm going to keep on standing. But I also see a woman who is saying, I have a purpose and I'm here to fulfill it. And whoever is not comfortable must move out of my way. Ah, uh, That's me, girl. Girl power, uh -huh. right? Which means that if you are not living that powerful life, it's on you. Because Lao Tzu says it best. He says, mastering another person, that is called strength. But mastering yourself, now that is called true power. Ah, which means what? Power actually lies within you, right? Again, what do you see? What do you see when you look at yourself? What do you see when you um, 
hear about what what and who you are meant to become what is it that you see what do you see and ladies and gentlemen i'd like to leave you with a very beautiful quote of mine and it says a candle tried to burn me it tried to ruin me but that very same candle lives within me and that candle is shining bright so allow your light to shine bright thank you so much and i hope to see all of you guys very soon yeah by the authority vested in me i shall now admit the candidates who are presented to me in the graduation booklet to degrees diplomas and certificates of the south african college of applied psychology the following students are graduating with the highest certificate in counseling and communication skills. Amukelani Hushwane, Andi Swasilikane, Angelique van der Walt, Bulle Kaba, Elenisha Andrea Betendacht, Heino Otto van Nigeg, Salanati Kwacha, Karabelo Semi Ramatesele, Karabo Sina Makoba, Katlejo Manape Maobelo, Kanyisile Kunene, Lerato Anna Mososana Motapo, Mandiswa Benyana, Melissa Msiza, Mili Mbila, Mosima Happy Pila, Nomsa Sibyl Mojapelo, Pumla Krai, Rowan Bosman with distinction, Salelo Rapolo, Shamane Naidu, Sharon Hamandishe, Sipiwe Olga Nduli, Sipo Chabalala Tatum Reuters Tato Jacqueline Masango Chepang Masoke Tsepo Kelewa Nalane Congratulations! The following students are graduating with a Bachelor of Applied Social Science in Counseling and Psychology Anita Varghese Chantal Monica Erasmus Deandra Geneva Rodriguez, Ina Makaukane Monisi, Ketsamang Precious Setati, Kenelwe Shireen Masupa, Kanyisa Ndota, Lereko Mahauhelo Mashongoane, Lina Jacobs, Malebo Ramichana, Megan Short, Michelle Nodia, Nsizwa Makakula, Offense Kekana, Savannah Zoe Go Paul, Savannah Kelly Hotong, Vilmarie van der Walt. Congratulations! The following students are graduating with a Bachelor of Social Science Honors in Psychology Alexandra Hajin Nikolaides, Alicia Kurza, Arlene Mary Magdalene Pillay, Bennett Stradom. Bianca Breitenbach, Birgit Sherman, Carmelie Zulenka Kruger, Chantal Barnard, Irish Cow, Jason Perry, Julia Michaelovna Shatalov, Kayla Boshoff, Kayla Dorosario Turina, Cum Laude, Kia Mochetwe Innocentia Serobela, Kotato Nzoane, Kyla Ann McKinnon, Leslie Imri, Matthew Cheatham, Mbali Precious Mchali, Michaela Diane Nicolau, Mersini Pandazas, Monia Dutoy, Nicole Edith Wilson, Nina Fernandi Cronier. Noreen Tajbai, Ondirete Kalakosi, Pulane Jane Maine, Raquel de Inconacao, Sionade Leach, Spuokutle Todwa Matsebula, Tandeka Mashangu, Tandeka Francina Lebela, Cholofelo Geneva Rambai, Undima Bordenstein, Zelda Blamaya. 
Congratulations! The following students are recipients of the Dean's Award for Outstanding Achievement in their respective qualifications. Higher Certificate in Counseling and Communication Skills Rowan Bosman Bachelor of Social Science Honours in Psychology Kayla Dorosario Torina Congratulations! Let me be the final person to once again congratulate each of our graduates. I speak for all of us at SACAP when I say how proud we are of each of you. I would like to conclude the 2020 conferral ceremony by saying that although I've enjoyed a full and productive life, there are so many things that I still don't know or understand. In fact, I recently won a prize when radio listeners, of which I was one, were asked to reflect on their pet peeve. I called into the radio station and my pet peeve was that for, after living for over 30 years in South Africa, I still struggle to know the difference between now, right now, just now, and now now. After much laughing, they declared my pet peeve to be the winner. But there are things that I do know. I know that the worst word in the English language is but. I also know that the best word in the English language is overcoming. Graduates, your academic award that you receive from SACAP is not the victory. In my view, it's the result of victory. Victory is not when the audience acknowledges you. Victory is working through those times of stress, of depression, of failure, of uncertainty, of disappointment and overcoming. Believe me, every success story has its tough moments of wanting to give up. But in my personal view, obstacles and mistakes become the greatest allies in your life. There is no success story out there that has not had to overcome great obstacles and mistakes. So overcoming is what you carry forward with you. It's nice to have the award, but the overcoming piece is the journey to the award. The world is shifting before our very eyes. In fact, it's not the world you lived in even three months ago. COVID-19 has made sure of that. Are you ready for whatever lies in the future for this new world? By working towards your academic ward, each of you have demonstrated a diligence, a tenacity, a type of courage that marks you out as an overcomer. So go forward and overcome. This conferral ceremony of the South African College of Applied Psychology is now dissolved. Say,